For the first part of this reaction, we need to make oxygen gas. To do this, I added potassium iodide to concentrated hydrogen peroxide, creating oxygen, which bubbles through the tube and into the water-filled flask. The oxygen displaces the water, filling it with pure oxygen. When it was full, I pulled out the tube and plugged the opening with a cork. Next, I scooped out some sulfur beads, and notice how the sulfur is yellow. This means that it is absorbing blue light. I lit the sulfur on fire with a blowtorch and we removed the cork and replaced it with the burning sulfur. The sulfur vaporizes and reacts with the oxygen and burns a brilliant blue color. It burns blue because it is emitting the blue light it always absorbed. For the elephant toothpaste reaction, I poured 50 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide into a graduated cylinder and then added some dish soap. I then added 8 grams of potassium iodide. This is actually the same reaction that I did in the last experiment. However, instead of trapping the oxygen in a flask, all the oxygen bubbles mix with the dish soap and creates foam, making it look like, well, elephant's toothpaste. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that gets colder as it proceeds instead of heating up like most do. For this experiment, to start I added some water onto this wooden board. On top of that I added a beaker filled with 32 grams of barium hydroxide octahydrate and poured in 11 grams of ammonium chloride. I then mixed the two together for about a minute and ice crystals began to form inside. When I tried picking up the beaker, the water I had put in the beginning had frozen the block of wood and the beaker together. For the Briggs-Rauscher reaction, I need to make three different solutions. For the first solution, I mixed together 500 milliliters of water with 22 grams of potassium iodate and 2.3 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid. I mixed everything together with this magnetic stirrer and poured it into a jar and capped it off. For the second solution, in a separate beaker, I added 175 milliliters of water to 0.2 grams of cornstarch. I mixed it together thoroughly and boiled it in the microwave to make sure all the starch was dissolved. In yet another beaker, I mixed together 325 milliliters of water with 1.7 grams of manganese sulfate and 7.8 grams of malonic acid. Once everything had dissolved, I added the cornstarch solution to it. Once the mixture came to room temperature, I filtered it through a coffee filter several times to remove any excess cornstarch and then capped it off. And finally, for the third solution, I mixed 200 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide and 300 milliliters of water. Now that I have all three solutions, I mix together 200 milliliters of the first solution and 200 milliliters of the second solution and turned on the stirring. And finally, for the magical moment, I added 200 milliliters of the third solution. The entire mixture turns yellow, and then, boom, it turns a dark blue-black color. The solution begins to lighten in color until it turns clear again. Then it goes back to yellow, and then back to a dark blue. The reaction oscillated back and forth nine times before it stopped. The briggs rauscher reaction is one of the few known oscillating chemical reactions. I also did the reaction without stirring in a graduated cylinder by adding equal parts of all three solutions. This causes the change to dark blue to be much slower and spread through the cylinder. And finally, sodium and water. All I had to do for this reaction is throw a chunk of sodium metal into a glass of water. The sodium fizzles around on the surface until, bang, it explodes. The water molecules violently rip away the outside electrons from the sodium atoms, causing an explosion.